As you can see with this output of Show VLAN Brief, I still have the VLANs that we created earlier, plus VLAN 32, which I just left empty. So I've got a couple of empty VLANs there. We have ports 2 and 4 in VLAN 24. And what I wanted to point out to you was the name given to the VLANs as we created them, because we did not give them a name when we created them. And we don't have to if we don't want to. But a lot of times, especially when you have 10, 20, 30 VLANs up here, you will want to give them names because people in your server room probably won't refer to them as, oh, put this host in VLAN 47. You know, oh, is the new guy in VLAN 1001? You know, that kind of thing. They're going to say, is Jim in the accounting VLAN? You know, is Francine in the security VLAN? That kind of thing. And if you just look at this, you're saying, well, I don't know because I don't know which one is the security VLAN or the accounting VLAN. So let me show you how to give these a name. You do have to go into our VLAN config mode we were in earlier. So we'll just name 45. And let's look at our options with iOS help. And holy cow, look at all those options. Take a deep breath because frankly, you could go your entire career and use three or four of these at the most. I see a couple right here in the middle that's part of my CCNA security course and also my CCNP switch course. So we're not going to get to those today. They're, pretty, they're very good security features, but not something you do every day. And the one that you will use most often is right here in the middle of all this name. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Just give it a name. Not too many options here, right? <laughs> name followed by name and that's it. And let's go ahead and just do another show VLAN brief. And you can see the number or the name VLAN 0045 has been replaced by accounting. So good thing to know. Uh, that's really the only fine tuning though you do on a lot of VLANs is just give it a name, make it a little more network admin friendly. Now I want to talk about erasing a config and totally initializing a Cisco switch. Again, dear gosh, do not. <laughs> I had to clean up my language there. Do not practice this one at work. You shouldn't practice anything on production network switches anyway, but you definitely don't want to do this one because what you're doing is you're getting rid of your configuration and you're bringing the switch up really as if it were brand new, as if it just came out of the box. And let me just do a show run. This is short for show running config. And I'll show you all these show commands in one place later, but this is the current config that we have. And a couple of non-default commands here, of course, hostname switch one, you know, that's non-default. I gave it that name. And also notice when you look at the config where the ports are, that interfaces that are in the default VLAN, that default VLAN is not indicated. But if you put it in a non-default VLAN, you're gonna see this command, switch port access VLAN, and then whatever VLAN number you gave us, or we gave it. And down here at the bottom, a couple of lab commands. We're familiar with these on our console port, exec timeout 00, and logging synchronous. So a little bit of config on here, but let's just say I just want to start it all over again. So what I usually put in is this, wr space er, and it is short for write erase. And what you're doing is you are erasing the non-volatile memory. That is the memory that is not lost on a reload. So you're saying basically, I really want to get rid of everything I possibly can. So you're doing a write erase and you get a little message. Erasing the NVRAM file system will remove all configuration files. Continue and the prompt is confirm. You can't quite see all of the C is right there. It cuts off a couple letters, but it says confirm in the brackets. Now, anytime a Cisco router or switch asks you a question like this, consider what you are about to do because you're probably about to do something pretty serious. I'm a little surprised the default answer is confirm like yes. Um, if I wanted to get out of here, I could hit no or something like that. I hit the letter N and I got a message file system erase is not confirmed or could not be completed. So I got out of it. This time I'm going to confirm it and I could have hit any letter really because it's asking me, it's not asking me yes, no, it's asking me confirm. So if I hit enter right now, I'm confirming that, which I just did. Okay, the erase of NVRAM is complete and initialize the geometry of NVRAM, which means everything is gone. Or is it? Let's do a reload. We do a no when we're asked if we want to save system config has been modified. We're going to do a no. 
and we get a reload requested by console. Reload reason, reload command. Makes perfect sense. So I'm going to stick here until the reload actually begins, and then I'll pause the video and show you what it's like when it comes straight up. Because it's going to take a few seconds here, and then it's going to give screens and screens and screens and stuff. There we go. If there's anything of particular interest, I'll be glad to point it out when we come back. But otherwise, I want you to just see what the switch looks like at this point after a reload. And we're back. We are being prompted to go into setup mode, but I want to show you a little bit of what it looks like when you reload a switch from scratch. And you might want to put on some dark colored glasses or something because there's going to be a lot of scrolling here. Not much I can do about it, but see all this? <laughs> Not that you could miss it. Uh, this is what happens when a very important file from Flash is being loaded. And as long these scroll, by the way, as they go along. Uh, they go across the screen, across the screen, across the screen. It's quite hypnotic. Thing is, as long as you continue to see that, then you're okay. It's when these stop, and they stop for a long time, that you might be in trouble. You might have a little bit of a boot problem there. But fortunately, that did not happen here. We see at the end, here's the file uncompressed and installed, and everything is beautiful. So you get a little bit of legal ease here, you know, restricted rights legend, that kind of thing. Then there's a little information about the hardware you're on, and a little more information. These POSTs over here, and I'm saying it that way for a reason, but mostly, usually it's pronounced POST. These are power on self tests. And what happens here is basically the switch is running these tests to see if it's worth continuing to boot up. Because if any of these have a problem, uh, especially an environmental issue like the fan's not working, the switch is just going to say, you know what, it's not even worth the trouble booting up. And it'll actually tell you that here on the screen, not quite in that language. But it'll say something along the lines of, you know, environmental conditions do not permit me to boot, etc. It makes you very sad. But fortunately, all of our tests that began... Uh, ended and status of past. So that's all good stuff. And by the way, this is never going to be the same on two devices, whether they be two different switch models or a switch and a router. This is going to be different, but every device does run some kind of post. Now, here's a little message about this product contains cryptographic features, etc. And it's a pretty serious message because it says by using this product, you'd agree to comply with applicable laws and regulations. And basically, the really wild part about it, and I got to go back to it, I wanted to highlight that. There we go. The really important part is delivery of Cisco cryptographic products does not imply third party authority to import, export, distribute, or use encryption. Because there are some countries in, around the world where Cisco is not even allowed to ship this stuff, and I would not be allowed to ship this router or this switch with this capability to certain areas. So they're quite serious about that kind of thing. And to read more, by golly, there's the URL. And it's easy to find with a Cisco, um, with a Cisco, with a Google search as well. Then you're going to get a little more information about your hardware, et cetera, how many model, how many ports you have. Then press return to get started. But what will also happen after that is that you get some other messages. And don't let this throw you the first time you see it because, you know, you get screens of this interface is down, this interface is up, blah, blah, blah. And just let it all go by. Now, system configuration dialog. This is a little sneak preview. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I want to show you all this stuff while we're here. And I'm going to keep hitting enter right here. And you'll notice it keeps asking me a question. We were just talking about a yes, no prompt a few minutes ago, right? Well, here's one. And system configuration dialog. If I say yes to this, we enter what is called setup mode. Some people like it. I do not. <laughs> it's one way. Uh, it's a way to set up a switch or a router where the device is going to continually prompt you with questions. You know, do you want to enable this? Do you want to look at this port? Do you want to enable this service? What about this? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? And it just keeps going. To me, especially when you're getting started with Cisco routers and switches, it's much more efficient for you to go to the command line and do it from there. First off, those are the commands you're going to see on your exam. You might see something about setup mode, just you know what it's about and when you see it, and that's why you're seeing it now. But they're never going to ask you, so at what point in setup mode does you know are you prompted to do this? It's not going to do that. But what we want to do is just say no. And it asked me once, 
and I hit enter and you'll notice the percent sign came up and says please answer yes or no <laughs> and I could hit enter all I want to here or escape or anything like that and it's just going to keep saying yes or no so let's do no let's not do J and notice what it did it dropped me off right at the prompt so and notice also the host name is gone and if I try to do a show run right here, it's going to build it. And you can see host name of switch. That's default. But notice everything I did on 2 and 4 is gone. Hmm. What about those lab commands I wrote? Well, they're gone too because there's line con 0 down here at the bottom. And nothing is under it. Literally no configuration on the console port at all. So everything looks like it got erased he said leadingly, until you run show VLAN brief and you run into these VLANs. Now I know this video is going 11 minutes and I usually don't like it to even go that long, but we're going to stick here for another minute or two. We're almost done, but this is good stuff. How in the world did those VLANs survive the nuking, if you will, that we gave the config? I mean, we erased it. We wiped it out. Well, the thing is, let me show you the directory of the switch. See this file in the middle here called vlan.dat? First off, it's just fun to say vlan.dat. VLAN you can say vlan.dat if you want to. The thing is, all of the vlan information that you see up here in show vlan brief, it's contained in that file, not in non-volatile memory. We have to erase that file as well if we want to totally initialize a Cisco switch. So let me show you the two commands, the order I usually do them. First off, you got to do that write erase. And we're going to do that again just to get the reminder. We confirm NVRAM is complete, etc. The clock is way off because I haven't set that up yet, but that's fine. And now delete or DL VLAN.dat. And here's the thing it's really easy here to say yes or to put in Y. And you know what happens if you do that and you hit that? Now it's asking, do you want to delete a file from Flash called Y? Well, then it's going to say no such thing. What you've got to do here with delete VLAN.dat is when it asks you to confirm this, just hit enter. Because if you enter any data, it's going to say, oh, okay, you want to delete a file name called that. And then you get a confirm, hit enter again, and now it's really gone. So I'm going to do a reload and we'll come back and we'll see if those VLANs are gone. And here is the result. We went through all the same boot process that you saw before. I answered no because I didn't want to go in setup mode. Then ran show VLAN brief and you'll notice we have all the default VLANs are there. None of the other VLANs are there. They're all gone and all the ports are in VLAN 1. So it's just like you took the switch out of a box and it's brand new. So again, two commands there. You want to do a write erase and then you want to do a delete VLAN.dat making sure not to put in Y or anything else at the prompt. Just hit enter twice after you put in del VLAN.dat and you'll be gold. Coming up next, I have no idea. Let's both go to the next video and we'll find out together.